Welcome back. So in the pots today, one of my favorite colorways, and yes, I know I say that about all colorways, but I really, really mean it. I really do. This one here is a beautiful green and a beautiful brown. And to be honest, that's, that's just me. That's who I am. Greens and browns, I love them. Especially if we got like a nice rich brown and kind of a forest dark moody green. Oh, absolutely. Totally my thing. Anyways, first thing we need to do is tell you what colorway it is. Colorway here is what does the fox say? That's right. It's been around for a little while. Still one of my top faves. Absolutely in the pots. First thing we got to do, we got to get the yarn into the pot itself. Now this yarn is a little bit drier than normal and that's that's perfectly fine. I like to add my soak after the fact so I can control how much water is actually in the pots. Um, for this one, I'm going to use about a cup of soak for these five skeins. And what that's going to do is allow this dye to move just a little bit further. I really want it to mix. I want to get rid of as much white as possible. So we're going to throw kind of a chestnut up on the one side. And actually this whole side is browns. So the first side browns, we're going to flip it over. We're going to do some greens and my goodness, do they play very, very well together. So we've got that chestnut brown on that side exact same color on the other side here you'll notice we don't have any ridges or anything like that there is a tad bit of golden yellow in here and you can kind of see that creeping across the pot there that that beautiful orange that we're looking for and then into the center we're going to put that rich brown that absolutely stunning color right in the center get rid of that white get it mixed up absolutely so there it is look at that oh my goodness i love it so beautiful. So, all right, anyways, <laughs> let's get our fingers in there. Let's get this mixed up. Again, you gotta mix this stuff fairly quickly. You don't wanna leave it too long because the lighter dye is going to strike quite quickly. And so the issue you're gonna have is you're gonna get some whites towards the center of the skeins. The center of this one, not so bad. It is a really, really rich brown and it's got quite a bit of golden yellow in it and a little bit of chestnut and everything else so it goes a lot further than the two outsides that's for sure all right once it's cooked um we probably gave this about 10 minutes and you can see that that rich center is still kind of bleeding out a little bit um, at the end we're going to cook it for a good 15 minutes and not have to worry about too much bleeding after that so get that yarn flipped over you can see that center color really came through it's almost all the way through on the ends we've got a lot of white it was a lot of lot lighter color so get that in there on this side like i was saying we're going to take and toss um, just a really really light mouse gray into the center here um, i don't want to fight the colors that are coming through i really want to emphasize what's really there in the first place so um, just a little bit of mouse gray and just the tiniest bit like we're, we're talking like next to nothing we just want enough to take that white away and and really put that gray into the center there and allow that color just to shine to the best of its abilities on the outsides here we're going to toss a forest green now this is basically forest green mixed with a little bit of chestnut and a little bit of charcoal just to darken it up a little bit one thing you will notice with me is i always use charcoal to make things a little bit darker and I will actually use a yellow to make things a little bit brighter. So, um, you know, depending on which direction you want to go, this one, I, I really need it to be moody with that, with that brown, th that rusty brown, if you will. And this forest green plays so, so well with that brown. Absolutely love it. Yes, we want that dye to go nice and far. We want it to take control of all of the white on this side. So we're gonna get our fingers in there again. We're gonna get it mixed up. Make sure that we get that dye as deep as possible. Now you wanna at least push that stuff at bare minimum 50%, if not 60, 70% through the skein itself. Just like so. Next up, we're gonna toss the lid on this and like I said, we're gonna cook it for a good 15 minutes. Um, that golden yellow is really, really hard to exhaust. So we want to try and burn it up to the best of our abilities. There is going to be probably just a little bit left in the pots after the fact. Um, I would say like a hint of that golden yellow, but it, it should mostly be gone, which makes it really, really nice and easy to rinse. So let's get these lifted up and discover if we did it right. There we go. We just got that tiny little bit and you can see there's not much dripping out of the bottom. That golden yellow just really gets soaked up in there and that's, that's exactly what we were looking for. So 
good 15 minutes. All right, here we go. I am actually going to twist up all four of our bases here. So this one here is our DK weight. Um, it is a 8020 Merino nylon. We'll get that spun up, have a look at it. And I wanna show all four of these skeins side by side by side. Yes, they are from four different batches, but they are very, very close. Um, I just wanna show the differences between what a DK weight will die up like as compared to a fingering, a worsted, so on and so forth. So that there was our DK weight. Up next, we're gonna take and do our fingering weight. Yes, I'm doing it a little bit backwards. It just happened to be the one that I grabbed. So get this spun a little bit. I want this brown to be in the center because I wanna showcase this brown up against the green and the hint of gray. Um, a lot of time when people are looking at skeins, they're not looking at the entire thing. They, they focus more towards the, I'm gonna call it the pretty side, the bottom side of the skein itself. So you really want a lot of your colors to take and crumb across there because that's gonna be the focus point and we want everybody to see what's in this skein. You don't want any hidden colors popping up after the fact. So try and try and spin your, or twist your hanks so that you're really focusing on every single color in the colorway. Um, you know, if you've got a really predominant color, put that at the bottom, make sure that it shows through and then put the secondary and third, uh, third cherry, ooh, mixing up my words here, the third most prominent color up next to that. So really try and poke your ends in as well. I've noticed that it really cleans up the skein and I, I've gotten a couple comments in the past where it's like my yarn showed up and it was so full of knots and that, that's not the case these are actually just ties that hold the hank together so that we don't have it mixing up too much um, if i was just to twist these up and send it off it would be an absolute nightmare to try and wind up after the fact so this here is our chunky weight base another beautiful base 100 percent merino this stuff is so soft it's like clouds i i don't know how else to say it it is a beautiful weight of yarn to work with and it is incredibly fluffy just absolutely amazing. Again, tucking our ends. Let's get these things into the light box. Really show the differences between the three. So up first, fingering weight. We'll toss that right there, right up beside it. We are going to toss our DK weight. Now, for me, at least, I feel like these are just the tad bit lighter than the fingering weight. Not much, but just a tad bit. Our worsted weight, on the other hand, really likes to suck up that color. So I always find it to be just a little bit brighter, if not on par with our fingering weight. And our chunky weight really, really showcases that color. Generally speaking, it is a lot brighter, but you can see all four side by side by side by side, and they are fairly consistent. All right, next up, let's do that swatch. So we use a Addy Express, uh, and, and basically it is knitting in the round. So just keep that in mind. Um, we're also 44 needles on this machine here. Um, if you were doing a pair of socks, obviously your design's going to be a lot different than mine. If you're doing a sweater, it's going to be a lot larger. So you're gonna get a completely different swatch. But all we're really doing here is making sure that you can see kind of how the colors play with one another. I would not expect this pattern to show up in your final project in any way, shape or form, but we just want to take and showcase all those colors playing together so that you have an idea of what to expect. All right, let's get this twisted up. Yes, I have a drill on this machine. I do not suggest it. The manufacturer does not recommend it. You are going to destroy this machine with a drill, but I can put out a swatch in two to three minutes. So for me, it makes sense. I've got a lot of other things I can be doing, swatching, Spending a couple of hours knitting a swatch is just, it's too hard. I, I can't do it. So we've got to use this machine. We've got to really crank them out to the best of our abilities so that we can showcase more yarn. All right. So now that we've got that spun off, no, I did not tie off the ends. If you were doing a toque or something like that, you would you would try and tie off your ends. This is just going to frog if I, if I pull on the one side. So there we go. Push those stitches together a little bit. You can kind of see how that all plays together. Again, this design, it's, it's got a little bit of a spiral to it. That may not happen unless you're making a 44 stitch toque or something like that. So, or hat, sorry, you can tell I'm Canadian, right? Okay, there we go, in the light box. Very, very pretty yarn. That was on our DK weight base. Um, I do also wanna show a little bit about our, our worsted weights. So 
This here is actually going to have four ties on it rather than the standard two ties. Um, that's all just going to depend on which which batch end up coming from the mill. So um, some of them have two, some of them have four. This one in particular has four. So get it on your Swift, extend that out, get it nice and tight. And then let's start going through these four. So three of them are just going to be ties. They're just going to be attached. That's it. Get it cut, pull them off. There is nothing else to it. Same with this next one. There's only two strings, so cut it off. It's just there to hold all these strings, all, all the all the yarn together in its hang form. All right, this one here, you can actually see, I'm gonna spread these out a little bit. This has four strings attached to a single knot. So this one here is actually the start of our hank, the end of our hank, and a tie. So cut all four strings, get in there. Oh, looks like I missed a piece. I'll get it in a second here. Um, and then if you were to, there we go. Look at this this string right here. You can tell it's actually tucking in behind, I don't know if you can see that, it's tucking in behind the hank itself. So this is the end of our hank. Um, we don't wanna pull from that or it's gonna, it's gonna kinda knot up things on the other end. So grab this one. We got one more tie, cut that off, pull it out. And then, oh, there it is, got it. All right, perfect. And then you can see this one is actually on top of the skein. So it makes it really, really easy to come across. Um, you can tell that my, my skein isn't, isn't twisted up or anything like that. Now our twister, we use Romarin Electric Caker. This thing is absolutely amazing. I know my arm's in the way there, but you basically run the, run the string through the guide itself, the yarn, um, and then you twist it around about three times and then you get it going. Um, I don't like leaving the center pole hanging out because it will whip around and it'll start to fray a little bit. So um, I always like to take and kind of tuck it in one or two of the wraps and then basically Go to town, crank this thing up, get this thing skeined up, or caked up, sorry. This is a beautiful, beautiful cake. Um, my favorite part about caking is I can really see all the colors in the cake itself. I can see the start of the hank, the end of the hank, and the consistency all the way through. We do offer a caking service on our website. If you haven't checked that out, definitely do. Um, and it basically allows us to Look at this final uh, this final cake and see all of the colors and how they're gonna play throughout your entire project. You can see lots of consistency, absolutely beautiful. I love, absolutely love that rusty brown and just, it is beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so let's get into our pairings. Now right here we have, what does the fox say? Up next to that, we have S'more, please. I find these browns really, really play quite well together. Um, on the other hand of things, I wanted to take a move a little bit more towards the green. So I would say Wildwood is a great choice to take and go with this, what does the fox say? The two of those play very, very well together. Um, besides S'more, please, we have Life Begins After Coffee. You've seen me feature this one a bunch of times. It's just a beautiful brown. It's hard to get away from that. Um, on the other side of Wildwood, we have Collared Greens. And that just kind of finishes our transition over to the green side of things. And then to start, flowing fields all the way on the left here. So beautiful, beautiful fade, if if I do say so myself. Um, if you're looking for more of a semi-solid pairing, this one is going to be more of the same. So I would look at forest green for sure. These two colors, very matchy-matchy in there. I absolutely love them. Um, on the other side of things, I would go with that chestnut. Hands down, chestnut, forest green. Very, very similar to this colorway. Very, very complimentary. Um, if we're going outside of that, mouse gray is another one of those colors that really goes with just about anything. Um, I would say if you don't even know what you're looking for, hit up those three colors right there. Now this creamy coffee leans more in towards the rust side of things of what does the fox say? Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful pairing. A little bit more bold and to top it off, we have charcoal beautiful right now i'm not going to mess around too much let's just do the big reveal what does the fox say absolutely gorgeous colorway with its browns and its greens look at that baby fox so cute am i right big thanks for sticking around thank you so much for stopping by i hope you'll join me again soon let's dye some more colorways <laughs>